Now I want to talk about um, reproductive barriers and this most has to do with the biological species concept and the phylogenetic species concept but but it's an important um, it's an important concept so I want to uh, specifically talk about it. So suppose that we have two individuals of different species. There are multiple what we call prezygotic barriers or before the egg and sperm actually come together that could cause two species to to never reproduce. For example, temporal isolation. It may be that the mating or flowering occurs at different seasons or times of the day. Habitat isolation is another one, and we talked about that with the flowers living in different areas on the island. Behavioral isolation. There can be perhaps little or no sexual attraction between males and females. You know, if if a frog is supposed to give a call and the female is supposed to hear that, but if the female doesn't like the call, the female is never going to give access to the male and you'll have no mating that will occur. Well, if mating does occur though, so they're, they're, they're reproductively active at the same time in the same area and the chemistry is there, right, and mating occurs, you can still then have um, two, sorry, you can still have two more uh, um, mechanisms that can isolate these two species. The first one is called me mechanical isolation. This is where there are structural differences in the genitalia that prevent, you know, the copulation or pollen transfer occurring. Um, this is very common in many flowers where you have particular lengths in the flowers and, and the pollen, or where the pollen is at, and whether the pollinators can actually cause the pollen to be transferred in the right way, or insects that have this exoskeleton, so their genitalia is actually hardened and has a specific shape and it's kind of like a lock and a key and if they don't fit together in the right way then then even though they're mating or trying to mate it doesn't quite work and and so you don't have a a transfer of sperm to go and meet the eggs and you can even have if all of that works and a mating does occur and sperm does make it in contact with the feet with the eggs it's, there still can be a barrier where, for whatever reason, the sperm is unable to penetrate the egg and so you don't have a fertilization event. But if you get through those initial five prezygotic barriers, then you can come and form a zygote. And so you now have uh, a fertilization event that has occurred. But this still doesn't mean that, it's this, that it is one species because you can have hybrid inviability where the hybrid zygotes fail to develop or fail to reach sexual maturity. And this is very common in, in a lot of uh, hybridization events that occur where the offspring just don't survive to reproduce. But even if the offspring does survive and becomes an adult, that still is, is not a, does not mean that they are the same species because the hybrid could be sterile in the case of horses and donkeys producing a mule. They have different number of chromosomes and even though they can produce the offspring of a mule, the mule is for the most part um, sterile and cannot produce offspring itself. But if you can get through all of those barriers and produce viable fertile offspring, then that's a good way of saying, okay, they're the same species. Now there are two main mechanisms that we describe then of speciation. The two modes are allopatric speciation and sympatric speciation. In allopatric speciation, by definition, there is a geographic barrier that isolates one population from another until they have been isolated long enough and become different species. In sympatric speciation, there is no geographic barrier. The two uh, populations are living side by side where there is contact and other types of um, mechanisms happen to where they become genetically isolated. Uh, sometimes th there are different reasons why this can occur. Let me give a couple examples, real life examples of both of these. On the Grand Canyon there are these ground squirrels and on the north rim and on the south rim there are two different species, the Harrisi and the Lucurus species. Now because the Grand Canyon now is in between these two species, there's no way that they can go all the way down the Grand Canyon, try to cross the river and go all the way up. I mean, you're crossing temperature boundaries and, and elevation boundaries and then the river as a boundary itself. But ancestrally, these populations were one population before the Grand Canyon existed. And so the Grand Canyon has caused a division in the population, a geographic isolation, and you now have two separate species. This again was allopatric speciation. An example, um, here's a different example of sympatric speciation. This is the hawthorn and the apple maggot flies. 
So originally here in eastern United States, the hawthorn fly existed and it laid its eggs on hawthorn fruits. But when apple trees were introduced, the, the, um, the flies were able to go and lay eggs on the apple trees as well. But it turns out that these two fruits have slightly, have, have different times of, um, of maturing. And so when, when these fruits are being, are, are, when flies are mostly laying eggs on these fruits, they're a little bit disjunct, where they're mostly laying on the hawthorn fruit and, or mostly laying on the apple fruit. And then this caused uh, some natural selection to occur and some other things to happen where now the populations have completely become separate where you have populations that only um, reproduce on the hawthorn fruits and populations that only reproduce on the apple fruits. And so we saw this real life you know, speciation occur after apple trees were introduced here in the United States. And um, we've gone in, we can actually see some of the mutations that occur on the genes that help them to recognize, to actually smell when the fruit is ripe. And we've seen mutations in one population and in the other population on the gene that allows them to determine when they should lay their eggs. A really interesting um, study. And so this again was called sympatric speciation. So that's an introduction to speciation and, and how we think about speciation. What are the, some, what are the um, concepts that help us to define what species are? some of the mechanisms that occur, and some of the ways that we think about speciation in terms of it being either allopatric or sympatric.